These books are not reviewed by prison officials due perhaps uh, to language differences or because they are perceived simply as religious texts. The Department of Justice, which has oversight over the Bureau of Prisons, refuses to acknowledge the problem. Meanwhile, federal records identified by the investigative project on terrorism and available on the Internet show a number of Muslim Brotherhood tied organizations receiving government contracts, including contracts with the Bureau of Prisons to perform work such as chaplain services and Islamic studies. Can you imagine taxpayer money paying for these? No Christian minister um, that goes to prisons is paid by the government. I can tell you that. Uh, some, like the Muslim American Society, have dedicated prison projects in which they specifically collect money to send religious dogma to prisoners and underwrite volunteer chaplains. This effort is aimed not only at existing Muslim convicts, but to convert non-Muslim inmates. In light of the 2004 report, these contractual relationships with radical Islamic groups show that there is still very little oversight concerning the messengers importing religion into United States prisons. Wednesday night, we saw what, that's last Wednesday night, a week ago, we saw what happens when they leave prison and follow an extremist path, buying into propaganda that America is at war with Islam and they mobilize to act. It's time someone paid attention. The first thing that needs to be done is to get the Bureau of Prisons to stop being able to stick its head in the sand. The Department of Justice, which oversees the Bureau of Prisons, needs to immediately set a national vetting standards for all religious clergy and all religious texts and propaganda being allowed into federal prisons. Congress needs to impose new rules that force the Bureau of Prisons to mandate and operate strict investigations of those who preach in the prisons and the material they are allowed to import. Wahhabist literature, Muslim Brotherhood tracts calling for jihad, Saudi produced Korans that exude hatred for Jews and Christians. All of this continues to flow into federal and local prisons unhampered. To those who say that this is a violation of the free practice of religion or free speech is pure nonsense. Like government officials who are denied clearances based on background checks, Islamic chaplains who do not pass certain clearance standards can also be denied the right to enter prisons. That does not stop them from practicing their religion. It only stops them from spreading their ideology in government institutions. And incidentally, the Bureau of Prisons should not, allow, should not be allowed to set the criteria. We found that out in 2004 by the way the Bureau of Prisons determined whether an imam was radical was simply ask them if they supported terrorism. They said no. And of course, they all did, and all of them said no, and they were granted admission. It's pretty easy to lie under circumstances like that. Another problem that needs to be fixed is that in jail, Islamist converts generally avoid violence for fear of upsetting the prison authorities. Therefore, there's little, if any, incentive from the warden and prison officials to keep tabs on the activities of the Islamist prisoners. Unless prison authorities start collecting intelligence on those in prison who belong to radical groups and who talk about carrying out violence once they get out, law enforcement is faced with a total blank slate, critically dependent on confidential informants to help them thwart terrorist attacks. If not for the serendipitous appearance of a confidential informant in the current Bronx case, chances are that today... We would be witnessing terror and death in the Jewish community center of Riverdale. Yes, the terrorist plot was um, a sting operation carried out last week. But three of those criminals were recruited while in prison. Amazing. Well, this is the week of Pentecost. And the Jews are observing Pentecost. Um, for in Bible days, Pentecost was held on Sunday, though Pentecost is uh, Thursday and Friday. Um, perhaps Sunday uh, is the Pentecost that, uh, uh, that Christians will be observing. We don't know what's going to happen. It'd be wonderful if the Lord come take us home. But 
I don't see any wars brewing. I don't see anything happening right now that would lead us to think that might be a possibility. All we can do is keep looking up and knowing that one of these days we'll be out of here when Jesus comes and takes us out. And um, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, you know, the scripture says in a twinkling of an eye. Well, that could be less than a second. It won uh, 11 hundredths of a second. Just that quick, we could be somewhere else. That would be exciting, wouldn't it? <laughs> so keep looking up. This is J.R. Church. We'll see you again tomorrow with our analysis of the news.